Today's lecture is on the topic of decoders. So, in the previous lecture, we looked at various logic gates, these building blocks that are built out of field effect transistors, so-called so CBOS technology. We had the buffer, the NOT gate, the tri-state buffer, NAND, the NOT AND, and AND, the NOR, NOT OR, and OR, the XOR, and the NOT XOR, or the XNOR. So these nine gates were the basic gates that we presented and saw how to build those using transistors. Well, now we want to start seeing how to take these logic gates and use those to build higher level components. Now to motivate this, we're going to look at this figure here. And this is um, drawn after some examples on the website simplecpudesign.com. And this is a high level schematic of a simple CPU, central processing unit, or it could be a microcontroller, similar idea. So in here inside the dotted lines, uh, that would be the, the CPU. And then external, you'd have the RAM over here, random access memory. And we have three buses. We have a control bus over here in red. We've got an address bus in green and a data bus in, uh, in blue. So a bus is just a collection of wires. So for, if you have an, like an 8-bit uh, microcontroller, then the data bus would have eight wires, eight different bit values. And those, those would be then considered a byte, one byte of data. And those would then be used to do things like put data in and out of the, the RAM memory. Um, the address bus would be used to point to different locations in RAM. And the control bus controls the various different components that are in the CPU. So let's look at those here. Uh, we have over here a thing called the program counter. And what that does is basically count through the different instructions. Maybe those are stored in the first section of the RAM. Different, uh, the, the different instructions that form the, the program that's going to run. And you start with the first instruction and then point and then do the next one, etc. Uh, over here you have an ins instruction register. Uh, we'll talk about that kind of stuff later on. Here you got a, several multiplexers, MUX. Talk about those. Um, here's an arithmetic logic unit. That's where you do your basic addition, subtraction, stuff like that, comparisons. An, an accumulator, where you can combine different outputs from the arithmetic logic unit. And then here, a decoder. Okay, so these kinds of blocks uh, can be put together then to make very high level systems like like a microcontroller or a central processing unit so and they they in, individually are built up then from logic gates or other relatively smaller building blocks so today we want to talk about decoders so decoders are devices that have n inputs and M outputs with M less than or equal to 2 to the N. These inputs, we consider them to form a code. And then that code determines which outputs are on in other words have a logic state of one and you could have one or more of the outputs being on and then all the others would be off and this would be determined by the code the decoder takes the code reads the code and then decodes it meaning it produces these outputs which are some are on and some are off a little more specifically we would call this an n to m decoder now, a binary decoder
as m equal to 2 to the n and only one output is on at a time. And this is mostly what we're going to focus on, although not exclusively. So let's look at the simplest binary decoder, the 1 to 2 binary decoder. And this schematically is going to look like this. It's going to have one input, we're going to call A, and two outputs, we'll call Y0 and Y1. Right? There's one input, and two to the one is two, is the number of outputs, right? So M, M the odd number of outputs, is two to the N. And here's the truth table. Here's A, Y0, and Y1. A can be zero or one. If A is zero, then Y0 is one, and Y1 is zero. If A is 1, then Y1 is 1, and Y0 is 0. So, based on whether this input is 0 or 1, one of these turns on and the other is off. And so we can toggle which one is on and off by toggling this input value. Okay, so that's a very simple code. It's a 1-bit code there. And just kind of by inspection, we can see that the Logic functions for y0 and y1, what are they? Well, y1 clearly is the same as a, so y1 is equal to a, and y0 is just the inverse of y1, so that was, that was y1. y0 is not a. So we could implement this using logic gates uh, as follows. We could have these inputs here. The A and the left uh, logic gate could be a buffer and the right one be an inverter. And then we could say pull off here would be our Y0. Y0 is not A. And then Pull off y1 from the buffer because y1 is equal to a. So y1 is equal to a. Okay, that would be a way to implement this two, uh, one to two binary decoder. Okay, pretty simple. Now let's see how we can simulate that in a, a digital simulation package. We're going to use uh, logic circuit which is available for free download for Windows systems. And let's run that and build that circuit and test it out. So here we are in Logic Circuit. And this is the, the main uh, schematic area. So let's grab over here. Here's our, our different gates. Let's get a NOT gate and pull that over. Now we can select it and do a Control r to rotate it. And uh, let's have it go up and down like that. Let's go over here. Here's a, an input. Let's pull that over and rotate it. And let's double click and rename that, call that A. So that's going to be our A variable. And then we want A to go and drive. We're going to just uh, right click on the mouse and then we can draw wires to connect that input to the input to the the NOT gate, and then that output, will come here and grab an output, and let's put the, an output over here, maybe right there, and let's name that Y0, and let's connect the output of the NOT gate to the that output T. 
tab y0. And then let's get another output and put it over here. And we'll double click on that and name that y1. And y1 is just equal to a. So we'll just wire this over, connect to a. Now, uh, logic circuit does not have buffers. It doesn't need them because we're not actually driving any circuitry. So you just wire things directly in to the variable of interest instead of having a buffer. Okay, so this should be uh, our circuit, that is our one to two binary decoder. So now we can go up here to circuit truth table and it'll run through and get us our truth table. So let's see here the two different values of A, zero or one. And let's see Y1 should be equal to A, we said, when there it is, zero, one. And Y0 should be the inverse of A, one, zero. Okay. Now that's the way we'll mostly use logic circuit, that is to generate truth tables to verify the behavior of a different circuit that we design and build. Um, but a little more interactive version of that would be, let's take out these inputs and outputs and go over here for the button and make it a toggling button and pull that in. And let's uh, click and rotate that so that we can connect it to that wire and double click and name that A. So that's the A now. Uh, and then for the output, let's use these LEDs. Here would be the Y0. And here will be the Y1. And then we could go up to circuit and we could say switch power. So notice now I can click on this A button and toggle it. When this little bar is gray, it's zero. When it's green, it's one. And so notice when this is zero, Y0, which is the inverse of that, is one. So the LED lights up. And Y1, which is equal to this, is zero, stays gray. If I toggle this, now Y0 is zero and Y1 is one. Okay. And to stop, I can just come up here to circuit, switch power off, and then go on from there. Now, uh, let's look at a two to four binary decoder. So our schematic symbol for this would be like so. It's going to have four outputs. And we'll call those Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3. And it's going to have two inputs. All those A0 and A1. Okay, so two to four binary decoder. So here, let's write the truth table for this. Here's the, the row, and then we'll have A1 and A0, Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3. Okay, possible values 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. These are rows 0, 1, 2, and 3. And what we want is for a given row, we want the corresponding y value to be on. So for row 0, we want y0 to be on. For row 1, we want y1. Row 2, we want y2 on. And row 3, we want y3 and for all other rows those are zero okay so for these different codes of the two inputs a0 and a1 we turn on one of these four outputs and the, and the others other outputs would all be zero okay so to build this decoder we have to implement this truth table and let's see, it's, that's pretty straightforward because what are these, what is Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3? Those should just be the min terms corresponding to these different rows because Y0 is one when we're in row zero and zero for all other rows. We call that the, the min term corresponding to row zero. So Y0 should be 
it's equal to 1 when a1 is 0 and a0 is 0. So it would be not a1 and not a2. So if a1 and a0 are both 0, then the inverse of those, the not of 0, is 1. So this would be 1 and 1, which is 1. For any other row, one of these then would become 0, or both. Okay, how about y1? That's uh, 1 when we're in row 1. So a1 is 0, a0 is 1. So that would be not a1 and a0. y2 turns on when we're in row 2. a1 is 1, a0 is 0. So that would be a1 and not a0. And then y3 is the last row, and that is not a1 and a0. So those would be the four logic functions that we would implement in order to uh, realize this 2 to 4 binary decoder. And right now, those we know how to implement using logic gates. Right? The not is a not gate, and the and is an and gate. Okay, so we can do this in logic circuit. Okay, here we go. Let's get, uh, we need two inputs now. Rotate this, it's just convenient. Just for a systematic way to implement these kinds of circuits. We'll have uh, two of these. This one will be our A1. Oops. Our A1. And this will be our input for A0. And we want to be able to have uh, A1 or A0 and also not A1 or not A0. So let's pull in a not gate. And we'll put this uh, like, like so. And then we can copy and paste that here. Move it over here. Let's go down a little more like that. And now we can pull this down using the right button and draw wires. Okay, so for our first Y0 output, that's Y0, the logic function we saw was not A1 and not A0. So we, can, we get the not A1 off of this not gate and the not A0 off of that gate. And we're going to do an AND of that. So we'll grab an AND and pull this over here. So we could take not A1 and not A0, and that will be our output. which we name y0. Oops, y0. There we go. And uh, let's go up and do a truth table, or we could do control T, also give us a truth table. So there we see, there are four rows, and y0 is indeed one for the row zero, and zero for all the other rows. Okay, let's go on. Uh, the next one is y1. We're going to need another AND gate. Put that right there. And Y1 is not A1 and A0. So we'll connect this to A0 and this to not A1, like so. Copy, copy and paste this output and rename it Y1. And now let's do the truth table there. Okay, so Y1, yes, it's 1 in, in row 0, 1. And then we can continue like that. Okay, so I went ahead and, and put these other two uh, gates in there. And right, to the, the inputs, right, if I want a, the not A0, then I connect to this inverter that's connected to A0. And if I want the A0 just directly, I just connect right to that A0 input. Likewise for the A1. So let's do a control T to get our truth table. And yes, we see, here we go. Y0 is 1 for row 0, Y1 for row 1, Y2 for row 2, and Y3 for row 3. Okay, so this is an implementation of a 2 to 4 binary decoder. Now, 
we're going to put a little wrinkle in this. It's very useful. We're going to have a two, the four, decoder with an enable signal. Okay, this enable signal will allow us to turn off the decoder uh, or turn it on. Okay, so this is going to look something like the following. We're going to have still our four outputs. Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3. But now we're going to have three inputs. And first is going to be an enable signal, and then A1 and A0. So the new thing is this enable. And now what we want to have is if we draw our two table, we'll have enable, A1, A0, Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3. If enable is zero, then regardless of what the code represented by A1 and A0 are, we want all of the outputs to be zero. Okay, so that's just a shorthand. We could go through and put all the different values of A0 and A1, but we don't need to. This just tells us that if enable zero, you get no output. It doesn't matter what A1 and A0 are. Okay, now if the enable is on, then we go through and we have the same truth table that we had before. And we got that there. Oh, da -da. Okay, so we just have added this additional condition that we've got to have the enable on, otherwise nothing gets turned on at the output. So how could we add this? Well, it seems clear that if we have a particular output, right, that is, let's say this is uh, Y2. All we would have to do is do the AND of that with the enable signal. Yeah, terrible. Not, not much better, but anyway. So this will be enable AND Y2. And then if the enable signal is zero, then the zero AND Y2 is always going to be zero. Now we get, of course, implement that either using two two input AND gates like this, or we could have a single three input AND gate. All right, so let's take a look at that in logic circuit. Okay, here we are in logic circuit. And what we've done is we replaced our AND gates are two input AND gates with three input AND gates, and then that third input we just connect it to the enable signal. Okay, so now we can do a control T to get the truth table. Here we go. So we see for the first four rows where the enable signal is zero, all of the Y values are zero. And then for the last four rows where the enable is equal to one, well, <clears throat> when we've got zero, zero for A1 and A0, we get the Y0 turns on, then the Y1, Y2, and Y3. Okay. Now, one use for a 2x4 binary encoder, uh, decoder rather, with uh, enable is that we can use it to build a 3 to 8 binary decoder. And to see that that's the case, let's take a look at the truth table for a 3 to 8 binary decoder. So we're going to have three inputs now. We'll call them A2, A1, and A0. Uh, let me move that over a little bit because we're going to list the row here. So A2, A1, and A0. And then we're going to have eight outputs, Y0, 
y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, and y7 will be our eight outputs. So our three inputs uh, that form our, our code, we just step through all the possible values, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay. Now the next four are going to just have A2 is equal to 1, and we're going to go through the same A1 and A0 values. So we'll have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. This is row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. What are our outputs? Well, for row 0, we want y0 to be on. For row 1, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, and y7. And all the other entries would be zeros. Okay, and then this would, this would all be zeros here. This would all be zeros down here, and then... Um, sorry, down here we would have these would be zeros, zero, 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 zero. Okay, now notice something. This block here of four outputs, and, and look then at the corresponding A1 and A0 values. So if you look at that, that's just what we've just outlined there is a 2 to 4 decoder. Now then look at the next set of four rows. Let's do this in blue. We go through the same A1 and A0 values, and we get the same outputs, but now shift it over instead of y0, 1, 2, and 3, it's y4, 5, 6, and 7. That implies that we could use two 2 to 4 decoders and somehow, you know, glue them together so that they could implement this 3 to 8 decoder. And then we could use that idea, then we could go from a three, two, use two 3 to 8s to get a 4 to 16, and so on. So in other words, we can start to to take the circuits, the simple circuits that we've designed in, in terms of logic gates and kind of put those in a box and then glue those boxes together. And so this is what we're going to try to do here. So that could look something like the following. Let's go over here. This is going to be a two to four decoder with an enable signal. And uh, I need to make it a little taller here. And here would be our four outputs. And we're going to make these be Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3. And we'll have the enable input here, A1, and the A0. There's A1 and A0. Okay, and for the enable input, we're going to put not A2. What's that going to do? Let's see. So when A2 is equal to 0, not A2 will be true, and it will enable this. And then it'll just be a 2 to 4 decoder based on the A1 and A0 values, and that'll just turn on the Y0 through Y3 to correspond to these first four rows of this truth table. Okay. Then we're going to have another version of that. Another 2 to 4 decoder. 
with enable. And these outputs are going to be the next four rows. Y4, Y5, Y6, and Y7. The enable input we're going to tie to A2. And then here will be our A1 and our A0. Okay. So let's see what happens. When we get down to the last four rows, A2 is equal to 1. So not A2 would be 0. That would disable this encoder. So these four values would all be zeros. A2 would be 1. So that would enable this second decoder. And then we would go through the A. Uh, I'm sorry, A1 and A0, not A2. A1 and A0 values in this table, and that would then output these four values for Y4, 5, 6, and 7. All right, so we, we can just paste these two together, and all we got to do is have then a logic gate, a not operation on A2, put that in here for this first enable, and then just A2 for the, for the other. And then we could put some other circuitry in there to also give this whole system an enable so that we would get a 3 to 8 decoder with enable. So let's take a look at that in logic circuit. Okay, we're back in logic circuit. Here is our 1 by 2 decoder. And uh, we've now broken up these different projects we did into different logic circuit components here. We can go up to circuit and do new logical circuit and it'll produce a new circuit here. We can then click on logical circuit and brings up this little uh, uh, menu where we can give it a name. I speak like test circuit and for the notation might just be TC, right? And so here would be test circuit. And now if I look at that here, this, this shows what it's going to look like as a symbol that everything that's in that circuit then can be dragged into a new schematic and it'll just show up as, as a rectangle. So let's see how that works. First of all, we want to get rid of that. So let's do delete circuit. Okay, here's our here's our one by two decoder, the two by four decoder or two to four either way decoder and the two by four with enable. Okay, we said we could use two of these to build a three by eight decoder with enable. Here's how we do that. So notice in this circuit, I can go over and grab this 2x4 decoder with enable, which is this. This is the actual circuit. These are the three inputs, and these will be the four outputs. So over here, I can just grab that and drag it and drop it. And there we got a 2x4 decoder with, with enable. And I can hover over one of these pins to see uh, what, the, what that pin corresponds to. So there, got a little bit, a little bit tricky here. Is output y1, etc. Okay, y y0. All right, so let's delete that. So here we took two of those. We said the first one can take care of the y0, 1, 2, and 3 outputs, and the next one will take care of the next four outputs y4, 5, 6, and 7. Their um, input codes will be the a0 and the a1. Here's a, a0 and a1, and then down here. A0 and A1. And for the enable, we said for the first one, we wanted to have not A2. So here's A2, not A2. Now forget this AND gate for now. If we just took that not A2 and put it over to the enable, then this would turn on when A2 is 0, because not A2 would be 1. And then for the second one, we would have, we want to have just A2. So here's A2. Forget this AND gate for now. A2, if we put that in there, when A2 is equal to 0 for the first your first um, <clears throat> uh, 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 four rows, then uh, this would be off. And then for the second four rows, when A2 is equal to 1, this would turn on and this would turn off. Okay. Now we also want to have an enable. So all we need to do is take this not A2 or the A2 signal and then just and that with an enable. So that output now will be 0 if the enable is 0, regardless of what the other input in is this will be zero and this will be zero and these will both be turned off both disabled all the outputs will be zero now if this is equal to one then this is one and 
not a2. So if not a2 is true, is equal to 1, then this one is enabled, and this one would be disabled because then a2 would be false. All right, so let's uh, do a control T to get the truth table for that. All right, so we can see that for all of the rows here where, where the enable signal is equal to zero, all of the Y's are zero. All right, now for the last eight rows where the enable is one, then we see that uh, we get Y zero, Y one, Y two, Y three, Y four, Y five, Y six, and Y seven turning on as these codes run through their values corresponding to the rows zero, one, two, three, uh, up to up to row seven. <clears throat> now, then we could take that. Let's go into the main here program, and we could pull that block in and pull two of those in and then do some gluing together of this, and we could put those together to a 4 by 16 decoder with enable, and so on. Okay. So, generally, in digital design, especially of very complicated systems, which, what you can do is start off designing, well, you start off with your, your logic gates, and you can put those together into a relatively simple circuit, with inputs and outputs, and then put that into a box, and in, in, into a block, and then pull that block into another circuit and build a higher level circuit, and then take that circuit as, in a box and pull that into other higher, even higher level circuits, and you can go up and up, and eventually, you know, you can have something like a central processing unit or a very complicated system. And at every every step, it's right, you know, if you imagine now, right, if I go in here, double click on that, there's the actual circuit. So if I was to instead of having this box, was to draw out each of these circuits like this, it started getting pretty messy pretty quick. So in fact, this is how designers think. They think in terms of a relatively small number of boxes, of modules that do things, and then they can combine those into one module and then use that and make high, higher level things. So they kind of stack these up and go up to higher and higher levels. Uh, uh, capabilities and levels of complexity, but at every stage, they're only looking at a relatively small number of of blocks. And then, of course, you could then drill down in to any of those blocks if you wanted to. Now, binary decoders, right, and an N to two to the N Decoder. One application would be you've got this code coming in, and that code is going to turn on one and only one of these output lines. And then each of these output lines might go to a, a different uh, process or a machine. Right? Process one, process two, etc. All the way down to you know some process n. So you can use a, a relatively short code to control a large number of processes, uh, given that only one at a time is going to be on. Now that's also how you use this in like the design of a, a CPU. You use it to, to select which different um, modules within the CPU are going to be enabled in order to do different types of calculations, like doing addition or subtraction, and like in an arithmetic logic unit. You could have a, an, an adding circuit and a subtracting circuit and a comparison circuit, etc. And you could use a decoder to turn those on and off uh, depending on what operations you wanted to perform. Now, so those are binary decoders. We, you're only turning one thing on at a time. An example of a system where you might want to turn on multiple outputs is the classic seven segment decoder. So let's take a look at that. Here is the classic seven segment LED display. So it's called the seven segment display because it has seven segments labeled A, B, uh, here, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. 
And as shown in this row right here, by turning those on and off uh, in the appropriate manner, we can form the, uh, the 10 decimal digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so you've probably seen this kind of a display used on things like uh, vending machines or other kinds of systems that just need a, a simple uh, and very visible output to show numbers, or you could extend it so they could also show, show letters. So how would we implement a decoder that would turn these different digits on? Well, let's see. So we, we're going to have 10, 10 digits here. Uh, and let's see, if we had three input variables, two to the third would, would give us eight rows in the truth table. But we need at least 10 rows because we got 10 different digits to represent. So we're going to need four inputs. So we will uh, let those be A, B, C, and D. And then here would be our row value, which would also correspond to the decimal digit, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We'll just show 0 to 3 here. So we just count out 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Those are our first four rows. And for those corresponding digits, what segments do we need to turn on? We put the segments over here, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And these are going to be the logic functions for those. Okay, for uh, decimal uh, zero, for row zero, here is what we want to see. And so we look over here, and we see that all of the segments must be on except for G. G should be off, and all the others are on. So G is off, and all the others are one. How about for the digit 1? Well, over here we can see we only want B and C to be on. That's B and C. And all the rest are 0, and etc. So you just go through and fill out this truth table. And then you would implement the logic functions for the A, B, C, D, E, F, and G segments. And that would allow you then to provide as an input a 4 um, variable code that then would allow you to control this seven segment display to turn on these 10 different uh, decimal digits. Now since you have four input variables uh, and two to the four is 16, uh, you can add some other outputs and very often in binary systems we use um, uh, a hexadecimal uh, numbering system where we have 16 digits and those would go 0 through 9 that would be 10 and then we have a b c d e and f and those would represent that all the way from 0 9 10 11 12 13 14 5th f would be 15 okay and then here's ways uh, that you could represent the letter a b c d e and f Okay, so you could extend out this truth table then to have uh, 16 rows and represent all of those 16 hexadecimal or hex digits. Okay, so in one of the, in one of the lab projects, you're going to uh, actually implement a seven-segment decoder that's going to allow you to do this, you're going to do this in logic fun, uh, uh, logic circuit. An interesting application of decoders is to implement logic functions with them. So we can look at implementing logic functions. decoders. So let's look at a three input variable truth table. There's a row. Here's A, B, and C. And here's Y. So we got row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 0, 0. Oops. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. 
all ones, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one. Follow the pattern. And let's say the uh, y values are one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. So let's say that's the truth table. Now, suppose we have here um, a three by eight decoder. All right, and this is right y zero down to y seven. And this has an enable. And then we put our A, B, and C values in there. All right. So the Y0 logic function is going to turn on when A, B, and C are 0, when we're in row 0. Okay, so that's here. So this is going to be correspond to the, the Y0 output. This one, let's see, that's in row two. That's going to be the Y2 output. Here you've got rows four and five. So that's row, uh, uh, that's Y4 and Y5. So here's Y0. Let's erase that Y7. Here's Y, Y2, Y4, and Y5. So if we're any any of these rows, Row 0, 2, 4, and 5, we want the output function to be 1, otherwise it's 0. So here's all we have to do. Just take all of those outputs and put them into an OR gate, and then that's your logic function because the internal logic of the, the n to 2 to the n decoder gives you outputs which turn on and are one for every one of these different rows in the truth table so just select the rows that you want to and together this is the sum of products form for an arbitrary truth table arbitrary logic function just just or those together and that's your logic function and again this if you don't have a, in this case a four input or gate we, we talked about how you can use two input or gates multiple two input or gates and or those together to, to effectively make a four input or gate okay so uh, and if you always want this thing to be on of course you would just put enabled to one you just hardwire it to the high voltage and would just stay on. But then the enable would allow you to turn this on and off. That would give you more versatility. So let's do this in uh, logic circuit. So here we have our decoders we made before. So we're going to use a 3 by 8 decoder to implement this logic function. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, for our enable, we're just going to hardwire this to have a constant value down here see constant we'll bring this in and we'll just wire that in to have a, a value of one so it's always enabled and then we'll have our inputs a b c, and c a b and C. And then here are our eight outputs, Y0 through Y7. And we want to take four of those and OR them together. So we go down here and grab an, an OR gate. We want four inputs. Select four inputs. There's our four input OR gate. And so we want a row zero, which is this one right here. And we want row two, so it's zero, one, two. And 
then row four, that's, that's zero, one, two, three, four, and then five. So here's five. Okay, and so the claim is now that that output should be our logic function. Why? Let's do a control T and get the truth table. Let's see. So row zero to row three or five. Uh, I'm sorry, row zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, we get the appropriate ones and zeros in the right place. So there's an interesting way to use a decoder to implement a logic function. So you can buy decoders, integrated circuits that uh, implement these de various decoders. And in the early days of uh, electronic computers, uh, so like 1960s and 70s, um, a lot of computers were built using these discrete kinds of chips, kind of low-level integrated circuits, logic gates, decoders, things like that. Of course, these days, all of these components are all put on one gigantic collection on a single silicon substrate uh, for a chip that has billions of, you know, of transistors on it. So they're all integrated into one big circuit rather than having a whole bunch of smaller circuits and you have to wire them together and put them on a motherboard and stuff like that. But the idea is the same as far as the design and the logical nature of the behavior of the circuit. If there are decoders, we may ask, are there encoders? And the answer is yes. Decoders decode and encoders encode. Um, in particular, a binary encoder has M equals two to the N inputs. and N outputs. So maybe we would have something that would look like this. And if N is equal to two, then two to the N would be four, that'd be four inputs. Put these here. And let's suppose these inputs are A0, A1, a2 and A3, and then we would have N is equal to two outputs. We put those right here, and maybe those are Y1 and Y0. And for this to be kind of the mirror image of the binary decoder, right, and the binary decoder would take, in that case, it would take uh, two input variables and those would form a code which would determine which of these four outputs would be on and all the others would be off. So the inverse of that would be we would assume only one of these A0 through A3 is on, the others are off. So let's draw a truth table that looks like this. A3, A2, A1, A0, Y1, and Y0 one and only one of the A's can be on. So we could have uh, A0 on and the others off. We could have A1 on and the others off. A2 on and the others off. Or A3 on and the others off. These would be the only four possibilities. Those four possibilities, well, four is two to the two, so these two variable, output variables, should be able to code those possibilities. And we can just write the code as zero, 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 one, one zero one one. Okay, and so that would be the truth table. We would have two logic functions here. We could just write down what these logic functions were in terms of these A values. And that would be a simple encoder. Now, one application for something like this is when you have in a, uh, like a microcontroller, you have what are called interrupt. request. So a microcontroller will have some interrupt lines. And so external devices can 
if they take and put the uh, logic state of their, their interrupt line up to one, that tells the microcontroller something wants attention. Okay. And so in this case, you could have four different devices connected to the microcontroller. And then if something wants attention, this code will tell you what device wants attention. It will tell the microcontroller, uh, you know, what to do or where to look, etc. So usually in that case, um, what we would, of course, if those were independent uh, external devices, there's no guarantee that only one at a time would assert its uh, its signal to one. You may have two of these. They may put a one on the system, okay? So we gotta be a little more subtle. So what you'd probably build would be what we would call a priority encoder. And so you would give a higher priority to say one of these lines, um, you know, maybe A3 has the highest priority, A2 is the next highest, et cetera. And so if multiple lines asserted a one at the same time, whichever had the highest priority would get the attention of the CPU. So let's try to kind of work through this. We're, we'll bring in the priority business here in, in a little bit. Uh, let's add another signal though, R equals one means there is a request. So you actually wouldn't want to have these inputs uh, to assume that one of them was always equal to one because if there was no request for uh, attention from the CPU or the microcontroller, they could all be equal to zero. So let's allow that. And then we'll have this other signal called the request signal. If that's equal to one, that tells the microcontroller that something is requesting attention, and then it can go look at this code and figure out which device is requesting attention. If R is equal to zero, no request. And it can just go on and do whatever it's doing. Okay, so let's fill out this table a little, again. A3, A2, we're gonna add this request signal now, A1 and A0. Here's the request signal, and then here's the code, Y1 and Y0. We're still going to assume that only one of the A's can be on at a given time, but they could all be off. So if they're all off, then the request signal is zero, and we don't care what this code is because there's no request. Now we can say we could have A0, A1, a2 or A3 could be on, and all the others would be zero. In this case, there is a request, and then we have these codes, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Okay. So that's a little more realistic. Now, of course, that still assumes that only one of the external devices asks for an interrupt at a given time. But let's just take a look at this, uh, these logic functions. What would they be? Well, we can see that the request signal is zero uh, only if all of the A's are zero. So we could write it as A3 or A2 or a one or a zero. If all of these A's are zero, then that's zero or zero or zero or zero is zero. But if any of them is a one, then one or anything else is one. Okay, so that would be all these rows. Very well. Okay, then how about, well, let's look at Y1. Okay, we go down here. Y1 is one when what, when A2 is one or A3 is one. So we could write Y1 as A2 or A3. How about Y0, when is it one? Here's Y, uh, I'm sorry, Y0. Y0 is one here and there. So Y0 is one when A1 is one 
or when A3 is 1. So you could write this as A1 or A3. And there would be your logic functions that would implement this encoder. Now, as I mentioned, this is not really a super practical encoder because in practice, you really couldn't assume that uh, these devices connected to these different input lines would somehow coordinate with amongst each other so that only one at a time would ever assert a one. So we really have to try to implement this using the idea of priority encoding. So let's see how we can modify what we've done here for that. A3, A2, A1, and A0. Our request signal, Y1 and Y0. Okay, if all are zero, uh, we have no request signal. We don't care what the codes are. Now, let's say, let's make A0 priority, then A1, and etc. Okay, so if A0 is 1, we don't care what any of the other A values are. We're going to encode and tell the, the microcontroller that, that device, the device connected to A0 needs attention. So first of all, there will be a request that would wake up the microcontroller, tell it to go look at this code to figure out what device needs attention. We'll make that code be 0, 0. Okay, if A0 is equal to 0, then A1 has priority. So if A1 is 1, then we don't care what A2 and A3 are. We have a request, and we have the next code, say 0, 1. If neither A0 or A1 are 1, then A2 has the priority. We don't care what A3 is. We have a request, and we'll make that code be 1, 0. And finally, if A3 is 1, and all the higher priority signals are 0, and we have a request, and the code will be 1, 1. There would be our truth table. We've got a lot of don't cares. Remember, if we have don't cares, that would mean that in the implementing the, the logic function, we would have a, a lot of uh, flexibility in trying to make a better minimized logic function. Okay, so our logic functions are going to be R, Y1, and Y0. Now, the, the R function uh, is the same as before, right? Uh, if, if any of the inputs is equal to 1, then we have a request. And, and if multiple are 1s, well, we still have a request. So that's already done. Okay, so now we're going to look at the Y1 and the Y2. So let's make K maps for these. Uh, let's see here. Let's put uh, A3 and A2 here, and then A1 and A0. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So let's look at the logic function for uh, output Y1. <clears throat> What is that equal to 1? Whenever, uh, well, first of all, A0 and A1 have to be 0, and then A2 is 1. That's 1. Or A3 is 1. So whenever A2 is 1, or A3 is 1. So A2 or A3 is equal to 1, and A0 and A1 are both equal to 0. So here's... A0 and A1 are equal to 0. That's the top row. All right, so the fact that, right, for we're looking over here, when Y1 is equal to 1, we have to have A0 
and A1 are equal to zero. So we have to be in this top row. Now, in that top row, we have a one if A2 is equal to one. A2 is equal to one here and here. So we get one there and there. Or if A2 is equal to zero and A3 is equal to one. So A2 is zero and A3 is equal to one. That's here. A2 is zero and A3 is one. So we got that right there. Now, what about uh, all four are zero? That's this top row. We don't care. It's a don't care. So we can put a don't care there. Oh, that's nice. Because then it's, the logic function is just the top row. And what is that top row? It's right here. A1 is zero. A0 is zero. So we can see that Y1 would be not A1 and not A0. Now let's look at the logic function, the K map for Y0. A3, A2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, A1 and A0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. I did these wrong up here. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Here we go. Okay, so now this is going to be for Y0. When is y0 equal to 1? Let's do this in blue. Here and there. All right, so the first one is when a0 is 0 and a1 is 1, and we don't care about the other two. a0 is 0 and a1 is 1. a1 is 1 and a0 is 0. That's down here. And a1 is 1. And A0 is 0. Okay, so it's going to be in this, this row. And we don't care about A2 and A3. That means it's this entire, entire row as ones. Very well. Um, we can write that as A1 is 1 and A0 is 0. That's A1 and a0 prime not a0 all right now what are the other what's the other uh, possibility that's this bottom row here and that's where a2 oops make it blue a2 a1 and a0 are all equal to zero and a3 is equal to one so a3 is equal to one and all the others are equal to zero. So that would be right, right here. A3 is one, and A2 is zero, and A1 is zero, and A, uh, and A0 is zero. So that would be right, right here, this upper right corner, okay? Now, let's see. So we could try to just encode that guy by itself. We could wrap that around with this cell. We can even do better because look at this upper left cell. That's what's where all four are zero. That's the first row and that's a don't care. So we can put a don't care there. And now we see that we can take these four corners and those form a two by two block. And what is that logic function? Um, that is a2 is equal to 0 in both the left and right columns, and A0 is equal to 0 in both the top and right rows. So that is not A2 and not A0. So there's our logic function for the Y0. And as we said before, right, the, the R is simply the or of all of the inputs, A3 or A2 or 
A1 or A0. So there are relatively simple logic functions to implement this encoder, this priority encoder. Now, another form of uh, encoding that's very useful is called the idea of parity bit. So imagine we have two variables. We'll call these these bits in terms of like RAM, something like that, storage or hard drive storage. So we've got these two bits. And the problem is when you store this, uh, they make it corrupted. So we're going to do something. We're going to add cause a parity bit to be set equal to zero or one so that given a1, a0, and p, this sequence has an even number of ones. Okay? So, for example, let's say, well, let's just make it a true table actually for that. Here's a1 and a0, and here's p. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We want to have an even number of 1s. So in the first row, there are no 1s. So this would be 0, and we'd have no 1s. That's even. Odd number in the next row, so we put 1 here. So we got an even number of 1s. Next row, we put a 1. And third row, we've got two, uh, the fourth row, well, row 3, which is the fourth of the rows. There is 1 and 1. That's an even number, so we make P be equal to 0. Now, why is that useful? Because if we have these saved then these three bits, A1, A0, and P, and then when we read them back, one of them gets corrupted, switches from a 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. We can count the number of 1s, and if it's not even, right, if it, if it was originally even and we changed one of them from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1, then you'll have an odd number of 1s. And then we'll know that there's an error, right? And so that's the idea of a parity bit. It, it's able to detect that there is an error. And if you look at this function, we've seen that before. That is the exclusive OR operation. So the parity bit is simply, well, the output of an exclusive OR gate where we put the two A1 and A0 as the inputs, and the output is P. Now, how can we check... Uh, when we read these three bits, right? So, so what we do is we store this extra bit, a parity bit, uh, with the original two data bits, and then we can do this test. Now, how can we do that test? Here's what we can do. Suppose when we read these out, we read out values A1 tilde and A0 tilde. One of these may be an error. We put this through an exclusive OR, and we get a value that would be Q, Okay. So if you have an odd number of 1s between these two, then Q will be 1 because it's the exclusive OR operation. And then we take that and we put it into another exclusive OR. And we add in our read out parity bit, which is P tilde, which may one of these may be an error. And then the result will be E. E equals 1. We have an error. One of these bits is wrong. Okay. Why would that be? Um, well, if A1 tilde and A0 tilde are correct, they're just A1 and A0, well, then the output of this X or Q should just be equal to the original P. And then the exclusive OR of P and P, if P has no error, well, that's going to be 0, because it's going to be 0 and 0, or 1 and 1. Okay, so you get E is equal. If there was no errors in any of these, you'd get this would be equal to 0. If there was an error in the P tilde, well, then this would be, that would be the opposite of Q, and then one of these would be 1, the other would be 0, and the exclusive OR would give you 1. Or, if there was an error in one of these bits, then, right, you, you would go 
either from 0, 0 to 0, 1 or 1, 1, 0. So the P value would change, the Q value would change. Or, right, you can just see that if you take any one of these combinations and you make a bit error, the output of this exclusive OR is going to change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. And so again, that would be different if the P was correct then this Q would be incorrect, and so then the exclusive OR would be equal to 1. So this thing will detect errors. So this generates the parity bit, and then this detects errors. And we can extend that. Um, we could have, for example, a single uh, parity bit for 8 bits, a byte of data. And just ex using these exclusive OR gates, we could build that up.